Big hello and uh, welcome everyone uh, to the session CMP103. This session is about how do you manage large fleets of Google Cloud Compute Engine VMs. And I'm Ravi Chintalapudi, a product manager in Google Cloud. And today I'll walk you through a few solutions what we are building to address a lot of our customer challenges, what we have heard from you all when managing large fleets of Compute Engine VMs. So I'll start with the very high level. What are the different problems what we have heard from you all and aggregated way, summarized way there. And then we'll talk about what are the solutions we are building to go address those challenges. In that specifically, I'll drill down on uh, patch management, configuration management. I'll also give you a background on why we chose this and how we're going to go progress and make our roadmap. Uh, going with demos, deep dive in demos and uh, wrapping up with uh, roadmap. I understand. Uh, you'll be listening to a lot of sessions in Google Nest next. So there'll be a lot of data. It's very hard to remember everything. But there is one key takeaway. There is one thing I want you to remember from this session. That is this. GCP now provides automated patch management service, configuration management service across Windows and Linux, across your Linux, uh, Linux distros, across your hybrid environments. Obviously, we prioritize GCP first with things to come up in the near future. With that, I'll get started. So as I said, uh, I'll start with what are the top challenges, what we have heard from you all when managing your large VM fleet. Um, then we'll talk about how are we addressing that. The interest of time, I'll talk about only a few of them. Uh, the first one, if I start with, as more and more customers starts migrating their applications, building their applications in GCP, they're often dealing with thousands of applications, 10,000s of VMs, petabytes of storage. So managing this large infrastructure at scale easily and effectively has become a big burden for our customers. Second thing is most of our customers are used to some management tools when managing their on-prem uh, tools, on-prem infrastructure. So as they make their journey to the cloud, they expect the cloud providers like GCP to provide some native management tools because either those existing tools are not compatible with the one which is running in the cloud or they might be working with only specific cloud. Third big problem what we have seen is mostly from a security standpoint. Think of a scenarios where we had WannaCry, Meltdown, Spectre, where any of these vulnerabilities hit. The biggest thing on an IT admin's mind is, is my environment compliant? How bad is that? How can I bring it back to the compliance state? Are all my VMs on it in a desired configuration? Which of them drifted? Why drifted? How it drifted? It's a lot. So managing security at a scale is another big problem. Well, these are just some of the problems. Uh, talking about what we have heard from a lot of our customers there. In the interest of time, I picked up the top thing what we heard. So what did it really do after hearing to all these problems? So we started uh, we building a suite of VM management tools in that we prioritize patch and config, keeping security and compliance as the top uh, view, a top priority for us. So for the next 15, 20 minutes, I'll walk you through each of the solutions and how we build it and how can you use it, how can you observe it and with the demos. I'll start with patch management. Patching servers is not something new. Many of our customers, as you all know, we've been patching servers for years and years, but still it is one of the top IT management problems. So we're really curious to know why it was such a big pain. So we started talking to about 100 plus customers across the globe, across the industries. Um, average size was really ranging from 500 to 20,000, showing that we've covered SMBs and even the enterprise thing there. And here's a quick summary. First thing is a patch Tuesday comes, you know, which happens on a second Tuesday of every month. The biggest thing on IT admin's mind, especially the patch admin mind is, what's the state of my compliance? how compliant I am, how bad I am. And this thing, I want this report across my environment, across my fleet. Whether I'm running Windows or Linux or different Linux distros, I want one report unified across my environment so that I can see the state. Second big thing what we have heard is reliability of patches. What does this really mean? As I was talking to many of the customers, one thing is super clear. Most of them are patching in a phased rollout. So they always start with, their dev environment first. If that goes fine, they go to staging, then pre-prod to prod. They do this because they're worried that a particular patch or a package might create some incompatibility issues, might break their existing applications. 
So they're trying to hope to find any of the issues throughout this phased rollout uh, so that they'll find something and they can fix it before applying to the next environment. Third big category, what we have seen in general orchestrated patching. What does this really mean? Um, most of our admins said uh, they spend nights and weekends only when they're doing patching applications, primarily when patching applications. The reason for that is they have to do a bunch of things before, they have, they have to do a bunch of things later. For example, before patching, they have to make sure everything is working fine. The health checks are there, the agents are running, users are hydrated, load balancer are taken care, there's enough space. Right after patching is done, they want to make sure their applications are running. They will do the health checks, services check, and that's why they make sure that they always do it in the maintenance windows, like in the Friday night, Saturday night, and they spend a lot of time to making sure everything's up and running. And there is a sequencing. They want to go automate these processes. When something goes fine, automatically roll out to the next environment. When the dev environment goes fine, go to stage. So automatically roll out, something goes go wrong, stop. Other big thing is application aware patching. So as I said, application is a key thing for any company. And when they're patching an application, they really want to understand the application architecture. So think of you're patching an entire application. You always want to go do a backend first, your database is first, then backend. So you do a right order and everything. So understanding the application infrastructure, having a knowledge of that is super important. The uh, last thing is, as I talked earlier, patching is not something new. Our customers have been patching for years. So there are a lot of existing tools. So anything we build has to make sure that it at least integrates or provides a value on top of an existing patch management tools. Okay. So after listening to all these problems and reprioritizing, we thought like, hey, we came up with a solution and where our vision is like, we want to go help our customers patch any OS anywhere. Any OS could be Windows or Linux. They could be running in GCP, on GCP, but our priority is right now running in GCP. We launched GA in April this year. So that's the general available. They all can go use it. However, the scope is at uh, GCP, both we do Windows and Linux. What's a big value prop? As a customer, why should I use this? So that just two main value props you should think about this. One is like, I get a compliance reporting across my environments, across Windows and Linux in GCP, telling you what's bad, how bad it is that. Second thing is automated patch deployment, ability to go fix that problematic machines and bring it back to the compliance. And I'm going to go detail into each of this stuff there. So, so let's start double clicking on uh, what is patch compliance. So as I said, uh, when Patch Tuesday comes or any new packages get released from repo managers, one of the key things for Patch Admin is give me a compliance report across Windows and Linux. So with our thing, you get a dashboard. As you can see on the screen, you can get a view of which part of my environment is green, which part of my environment is red, which environment is bad, along with additional data. Because when I just show you a patch, compliance is not enough. I want to know what's causing me to read that red, what type of patches I'm missing, how many patches I'm missing, how long I've been missing. So because there's an action item for each of this. If, I, if I'm running a company and if I see everything red, that's a show, showstopper to me. I'm going to stop and go fix that. If everything is, most of them is green, but some are yellow, probably time for me to take a weekend off and come back and fix it around the next business day. So that's one big aspect, getting the compliance view or your environment with the detailed metadata. Second big thing I want to call out is we tried our best to leverage native tools, native configuration, rather than reintroducing a lot of new tools. Yes, we do have our own agent, which actually does the job, but we actually go talk to the native Windows agent called Windows Update Agent or Moo. Uh, when we are patching for Linux, we talk to the native repositories like yum, apt-get, uh, the repo managers and everything. And we leverage whatever configuration you have, whether you're talking to Microsoft Update, whether you're talking to WSS, whether you're talking to repositories. The key thing is we're leveraging most of the native tools and config where we can. The last thing is on the supported operating systems. For Windows, we support uh, 2012 and above. And Linux, we do Red Hat and CentOS 6, 7, 8 versions, Ubuntu 16, 18, and Debian. Um, in our documentation, there's a clear supported operating systems link. Uh, that will be constantly updated when we add uh, new operating systems. So that's the first part. As an admin, I get the state of my environment, getting which one is good, which one is bad. But the next important thing for them is, how do I bring it back to the green state? That's my desired state. How do I bring it back everything to green? How do I automate this process so that I don't have to worry about everything? And that's where the patch deployment comes after you knowing the compliance state. When you're patching machines or your environment, the four important questions come to any patch admin. First thing is, 
what VMs I should I patch? Should I patch at my application level? Should I patch at my project level, GCP project, or a zone level, or a particular region level? So we provide you all the flexible uh, targeting options. You could choose to patch all web servers because that's how you labeled it. Or you could to patch all my dev environment. So you have all the flexible filters. You can choose the way you want, which I'll be demoing uh, in a few minutes when I go there. Second big important question uh, as an admin will ask is, what type of patches install? So first one is what VMs, that's great. Second, what type of patches I want to install? Should I install critical, security, or others? Because as I said, every company have different SLAs. That's what we've heard. Uh, Windows is 30 days, say, for example, Linux could be 60 days, 90 days. So every company differs, but on average, every company have different SLAs to go patch. So it depends on the type of patches you want to go select. Uh, you want to sell here. You need to have an option to select type of patches. That's the patch configuration I'm talking about. Couple of key things to hit here: patch exclusion. And many times, when you have a particular patch, it might break some of your line of business applications, or there could be some incompatibility issues. So you might want to exclude certain patches because you know that's going to break something. So there's an Apache exclusion capability where you can specify a KB article or a wildcard in Linux like star.kernel if you want to don't want to install kernel patches. There's a patch exclusion. Similarly, there is patch inclusion. Uh, think of a scenario where you got a security patch and you want that to roll out to your environment immediately. Then you just put that patch, include only this patch and roll out to all my environment. So that's a patch inclusion capabilities. So the first question was what VMs to patch? Second thing was what patches to apply. Third big question comes to customers is like, when should I patch? Patching is not a one-time thing. I'll be doing recurring. I could be doing like first day of the month, last day of the month, last Friday of the month. So we provide all those flexible options. You can do now, you can do one time, you can do a recurring and you can choose different dates, times, weeks of the days and everything. I'll go a lot more details when I demo that. The last part of scheduling is the maintenance window enforcement. Almost 90% of our customers told me that they'll patch only during the maintenance window. As we see people do it typically in the Friday nights, Saturday nights, or in the weekends. So they have a maintenance window set and they want to doing the patch deployment only during that time. So in our uh, product, you can specify a window saying that, hey, start at nine o'clock in the night on a Friday, but run for only for three hours. So we'll ensure that we run only that three hours, including the reboot, and we finish up whatever we're running and we get out of the process so that your apps up and up and running and coming. So after uh, the three questions, what VMs, what patches, when should I patch? Last important thing is controls. What additional controls I would need? I talked about a lot of patch orchestration. That's one of the top concerns what we have heard from our customers. One of the big thing is ability to run three steps, something before patch, it could be health checks or disk space and something to run after the patch. So in our UI, you will be able to select certain pre-scripts. This could be a script which we upload to a Google Cloud Storage GCS bucket and we'll pull out from there and we'll run it. And you can also condition it. If the script fails, the patch will deployment will stop. So you're not need to worry about like, hey, am I mass disrupting something there? The last part of the control is one of the major feedback what we have heard from beta when we released early this year was reboot control. Especially when you're patching applications, even though we do a control reboot, as a patch admin, I want to control my reboot because it's my application running. So we don't reboot. If the user chooses this selection, it's a configuration option. We will not reboot. We will hand over the control to the user. So after the patching is done, they can come and um, control the reboot uh, as per the needs. So that's about the two value props I've talked about. One is this patch compliance state, giving you the state of environment, how it is right now, snapshot. And the second thing is the ability to go fix that and automate this so future you don't have to do it. Those are the two big value props of patch management. Enough of me talking. I really want to show you how the product looks in the UI. So in this patch management demo, I'm going to walk you through three things. The first thing is how do you onboard and navigate and onboard the patch management service? Second thing is how do you get the patch compliance? And third thing is how do you go do a patch deployment? Basically go fixing those problematic machines and bringing it back to this compliance and you can automate those process. Okay, how do I navigate? So if I go to my Google console, go here, go to compute engine, and on the bottom, you can see OS patch management. And this is the screen what you will see because you have not enabled the services. So and you can see what APIs we need, what permissions we need, need. And if you click on learn more, it talks about whole details about what is this service, how are you going to enable, how it works, what's the architecture, what does this agent do, what permissions, all the details. 
Once you enable the service and activate the agent, so the OS config agent is part of the most of the GC base images, uh, base image packages, except I think Ubuntu and SUSE, which we are working to add right now. So for those things, you have to do it uh, separately. And we have a clear instructions. How do you go install an agent? Uh, and especially after if you are using an older VMs, you have to follow that instructions, uh, how to go get this OS config agent onto the VMs. So now I've enabled the services in the interest of time. I've already enabled it. I'll go to a project where I've already enabled the service. So once you enable and activate, we will go scan all your VMs, collect the data from all the sources, aggregate it and generate this uh, reports. Let me walk you through each of this stuff. The first style talks about all the VMs I have by operating systems. Looks like I've got 18 in this environment divided by different operating systems. Looks like my Ubuntu is good. It's not missing any red. So I don't have a store stopper. I can move on. Looks like CentOS is bad. I've got all the different categories I'm missing. I'm missing critical, important, other, and few are up to date. Similarly with Windows and Red Hat is also bad. And if you want to know more about what are these type categories, what does each one mean? If you click on this particular link, it will take your uh, documentation. Let me just navigate there. So if you go to an, uh, documentation page, which talks about the whole charts, what you see there and explaining what each one means and how do we compute that. Going back to the dashboard. Now, if I'm an admin, I'm looking at this. I really want to know why is this bad? Let me know which VMs are having uh, problems and what sort of things we already have this here. Okay, so you can also click on the VM instances page as well here. So you see the same thing and here's where you'll see the different VMs, what you have. Um, part of that is, let me pick up the uh, CentOS VM which is having and you can see all the metadata here, like what zone it is, what OS distribution it's running, what OS version, and it's saying that it's missing critical updates. When you go click on that, that's where it shows that, oh, I'm missing a lot of updates in this. Three of them are critical, but other things are security and other important, something for me to take an action. So in the upcoming releases, we are adding a lot of metadata uh, to show you a lot more data like CV score, what repo manager can connect to, where do I get this patch, it's a lot more information. In Windows, we are adding the KB links, the MSRT severity, so you'll get a lot more metadata in our upcoming releases. So that completes the first part where we have seen uh, actually two parts. First, we have shown about onboarding. We have seen how to get the patch compliance in an environment, state of your environment. The third thing is, as an admin, I want to go fix this problematic machines. I want to go create a deployment so that installs the patches and brings these VMs back to the compliance state. So now I'm going to click on a uh, patch deployment. So as I talked earlier in the slide, there are four questions which really matters for patch admins when you're doing a deployment. First is what VMs to patch? And we give you a lot of flexibility to choose different filtering mechanisms, whether you can patch by a project, a zone, I'm talking about a GCP project, zone, region, or you can use labels, tags, name prefixes. In this case, I'm using same labels called, hey, environment dev, all my dev machines I wanna go patch, or I can choose to patch all VMs, okay? So we finished the first question of what VMs to patch. Second important question is what patches I want to install? Because every customer will have different SLAs for different patches. I've seen most of the customers have a critical and security have to be done within 30 days. If it is non-critical, they have a little bit more time, 45 days there. So we give you all the flexibility so you can choose what sort of patches you want. Like for example, critical security, that's the only thing I care about. Patch exclusion. So this one I was talking about earlier. If you know that a particular patch or KB in this thing, it's gonna break your line of business application or some incompatibility with a known thing, you can put that KB article, you can put multiple KB articles, comma separated. We will exclude that when you are installing the remaining patches there. And Linux, you can do like kernel updates or you can do a wild cards. You can use any of those stuff there. The other hand, what you call patch inclusion, you just want to install selective updates. Microsoft released a security patch or they've got a separate package from Linux vendor. I want to install that particular security package on my fleet right now or like in the as soon as possible. So you can include that particular KB article or uh, the Linux or whatever the wildcards you are using to do that. Similarly, we do that same thing for uh, both Windows and Linux. Uh, it's running EM, Red Hat CentOS, or app Zyper, you can choose your own configuration and do that. So that finishes the second question, what we had, number of VMs, what type of VMs, what patches. Third 
question comes to patch admins like when should i patch patching is not something i do once it's a recurring thing so i need to give me all the flexibilities to do it now do it later so for example if i choose end of the month 12 a.m or i want to be in a particular recurring schedule like i want to do it on a specific day i want to do it on a fourth day fourth friday of the month or i can do second saturday of the month second tuesday of the month aligning with patch tuesday so whatever needs you have we provide a flexible recurring uh, scheduling option so you can choose whatever is right for you in my case i'm going to choose schedule for uh, later doing end of the month the other key thing to talk about is duration almost every customer uh, confirmed that they're going to install the patches only during the maintenance window typically happens on a friday night or on a weekend there so they want to make sure that the app is down at that time no user is connected to that so here you can specify a maintenance window like a duration how long you want to install the patches if you want to install the patches say for like 120 minutes that's the only time we will be installing the patches um, including the reboot we'll take care of that however we'll finish whatever the step is there we'll not start any new step there so the last thing which every batch admin will care about is rebooting by default we, the system will decide if the reboot is necessary based on the metadata what i'm getting from the package or packages uh, but some admins like hey, i want to control my reboot i'm especially i'm patching uh, my application i want to make sure that this is actually working uh, i want to be in front of it and i want to run some pre steps and post steps so we give that options to choose never so you can control it for now i'll leave it as a default system the next comes the pre and post scripts this is when i was talking about a lot of admins want to run some things before to make sure everything is working fine they want to run a lot of things after make sure everything is working fine there okay how do you do that so you create your uh, script upload to your gcs bucket google cloud storage bucket in our documentation we explain how do you get that uh, script into the bucket now i can go look at click on that it opens up a gcs bucket and i can go select hey i want to go do this my linux <coughs> pre-script and um, similarly you want to do some post script you want to go select this and you want to go build this then then you create your deployment so let me show you what happens if we create a deployment for the interest of time i've already created a few things that's where you go to schedule deployments so once you create a deployment you can actually see it here right now we have an option only to delete and recreate it if you want to make any changes but in the near future we'll be adding a capabilities where you can edit you want to add more machines you want to add in the configuration you want to change the date we'll be able to do all the changes Okay, now you created it when the time triggers the patch deployment runs and it'll give you a detailed patch status. So let me show you one example there. So I've run some patch jobs last week, uh, later this week, earlier this week, and it actually shows all completed. But there are some errors. So let me pick up a deployment which had a lot of VMs and it failed. So let me take this one which has got 16 VMs and it failed. First, it talks about a number of instances it has, Uber level status. If something errors occurred as an admin, hey, please take an action here look into that how long was the duration when it run it will give you all the details if anything was left in between or it's 100 percent done and what classifications you have selected gives all the details now this is the result state if you look at in this state some are successful in that 16 some failed because there's no agent detected some of those configuration was not running or something happened some are inactive which means that either machine could be offline or something happened it's not running so there could be other state there or the actual fail because of incorrect function for the patch. But here's the clear logs. If you click on any of the logs, you can clearly see all the details about this failure, why it failed, what time it failed. Typical verbose logs, you get that stuff. And this is where you can go to our stack driver logs to get a lot more details. Okay, so that completes the three parts I was talking about from patch. How do you navigate an onboard patch management? How do you get the compliance state of your environment? And finally, how do you deploy patches uh, to install those patches so that you bring that machines back into the compliance and set an automated uh, recurring deployment so every time it takes care of that now let's talk about the next service it's on the configuration management this is another service what we prioritize based on our customers need and also keeping compliance in mind so let's start with what are the top problems what we have heard with our customers when we spoke to them the first thing is when you go create your vm environment you want that to be in a certain desired state. 
Like I want security agents. I want monitoring agents to collect all the logs. Or I want uh, open certain firewalls, certain ports, uh, certain accounts, or you want to have certain software. So that's first part. You define your desired configuration. The second big thing is how do I deploy this to entire environment at scale? How do I deploy this at scale? Third big thing is maintaining it. It's not about deploying it one time, that's all good, but how do I ensure that this is maintaining? I don't want any drifts. Whenever there is a drift, as a user, I want to be notified. And obviously I want to auto fix it later stage once I get a contents, but at the minimum, I want to be notified if there is a drift, what drifted, who caused drift, what happened, why it was drift, how long it's been drifted. So you need to know all those details, what we call a compliance reporting from a configuration standpoint. The other big thing they was is like in a unified way, whether I'm bootstrapping or installing a Google first party software or a third party software, I need a unified way. The other big thing what we have heard um, from our customers, how do we integrate with existing CI CD app tools? For example, most of our customers use different third party uh, like CI CD tools, like whether it's Jenkins, Packard, Spinnaker, any of the day, their own tools there. They use our tools to go create the packages and the key things they want to take that package and deploy into their environment at scale and maintain it. So these are some of the problems to store, so to solve some of the problems, we started creating configuration management where our value prop is gonna be three things, define, deploy, and maintain. So what does it mean? We'll help you to define your configuration file. Second step is help you to deploy at scale your entire environment. The same sort of filters what I talked earlier in patch management where you can do it at a project level, at a region level, at a zone level, or a different instance level, what I talked about. Basically giving a lot of flexible options so that you can choose how you want to deploy that. We're going to give you a nice compliance dashboard across Windows and Linux, the way, same way what we have done with the patch. So, and with a lot of additional data, as a user, you know which machines are in the compliance, which machines went out of the compliance, what caused it go out of the compliance, when it actually drifted, so you get a lot more details on that. So let me walk you through how the product works. From a user standpoint, when you have to go start configuration management, there are two things you should think about. One is I'm creating my desired config. This is think of that as simple YAML file where you define your desired config. Hey, install a particular monitoring agent, install security agent, and have open this firewall. So you define all that stuff. We call that as a guest policy in our terms because you're applying a policy to the guest VM. Second big, big step is take that policy and apply it, what we call assignment, to the bunch of VMs. So let me double click on each of the stuff. Guest policy, when I'm defining my policy um, or the configuration, you might want to say what packages you want to install, all this part of the guest policy. For example, in this example, I took an example of, I want to install a stack driver and I want that to be always installed. My desired state is always to be installed as you can see in the screen. So in the same guest policy, now you define where do I get this package binaries from? I want to install stack driver, that's great, but go pull it up from this, the high uh, URL what I've given here, packages.cloud.com and coming here. Third part of policy would be if a particular software needs any configuration. For example, in this case, this is an MSI, I want to do it in a certain way, and if you have other configuration, like I want to do like silent install, so whatever configuration you have, you can put it there. So think of like guest policy, open up a notepad or open up any of the editors, create AML file, put what package you want to install, where do you want to get the binaries from, put any configuration. And the next step is, boom, take that and apply to a bunch of VMs. Now, let me walk you through how that happens in uh, Pantheon console, which is Google Cloud console. So in this configuration management demo, just like patch management, I'll talk about three things. One is how do you onboard out of the configuration management? How do you use it, the service? And next is how do you get this, creating a policy, applying the policy. I'll show you some of the G Cloud commands then assignment. Okay, the first thing is onboarding. So if you have onboarded uh, the patch management service, what I've showed earlier, that will enable all our, uh, the OS config APIs. So you're all taken care and you'll have everything done. You'll also have the gcloud commands. You can start using it. When we launched uh, the config management beta in the first half of the year, it's API only. So we are building the UI, the user experience there. Uh, so the API is already enabled, but in a scenario where if you want to use only config management, so I would go to uh, same um, compute engine or you can go to API services and just type OS config API. 
and you'll see a screen just like this will be an enable button in this case i've already enabled so showing disable button there so once you enable it um, it's the same api which powers both patch management configuration management and other services all we are building so think of this as a common api layer where you can access that okay that's the first part of creating the configuration part second step as i talked about in my slide the first thing is about how do i create my guest policy which is my desired configuration there so so this start with any editor whatever you have and start drafting your aml file what package do you want to install what configuration you want where do you get the repo manager there or you can take any of from our examples so if you go to our uh, configuration uh, resource link and i've added all of these things in the later parts of the slide so you can actually look at that stuff but if you go to google compute engine and say configuration management setting up config you can see all those examples here in this we have provided a lot of examples like how to install a stack driver agent um, how do you install other things there um, so there's a lot of examples you can see what state you want how do you do an assignment where you want to keep it uh, so a lot of examples then it talks about how do you create a guest policy so this is a simple gcloud command what we use to go create a policy so that it brings you into the system so for my demo in the interest of time i've already like created the policies and everything and got to the system so first thing i'll start with a simple view of show me all the policies i have my in my environment so let me increase the size a little bit so you can actually see better so gcloud as you learn, it's a beta because the OS uh, ma configuration management is beta. Then we talk about OS config and guest policies list. Hit that. I think I've done two policies. I should see both the policies. One is a strike driver policy, one is a Windows policy. Second thing is I want to know what exactly is in that stack driver policy. So I want to say again, gcloud, beta, OS config, guest policy. I want to say describe. And all the examples, all the examples, gcloud examples and everything are in our documentation. So you can find out all the samples, which gcloud to run when. Click on it, we'll actually show the sample. In this case, I'm installing a stack driver agent. We go up, it talks about where am I pulling the packages from. It'll talk about uh, some labels here, as you can see. So which means that any VM just got a label called color is equal to red. That's where we'll apply this uh, VM. So next time we create a new VM, put a label, this uh, configuration will be automatically applied and you can put some policy assignments there. Okay. In the interest of time, I took the policy and applied to a few VMs. So let me see how many VMs I got applied to. So you want to see like guest policies, uh, you want to see describe, and you can also want to know what's could be installed and everything there. So let me show that one as well very quickly. And the other command for this is uh, gcloud command. And this actually is saying same G Cloud compute instance OS inventory list instances. So instances which has got the stack driver agent. So you can actually see that stuff, uh, all instances what I have in that stuff there. So I've got two machines which have got uh, this particular uh, stack driver agent installed. Cool. So that completes uh, configuration management demo where we talked about how do you onboard the service, how do you create the compliance, uh, your desired configuration guest policy how do you apply that on your this thing and you can how can you verify that stuff there cool let me go back to the slides so the key thing is about roadmap so as i said we launched ga of patch management in april the first half of the year same time as we launched beta of configuration management so the rest of the year uh, second half of 2020 we will be launching uh, multiple versions of os patch management where we'll doing incremental updates improvements some of things could be really simplifying that onboarding experience, applying a lot of customer feedback and getting a lot of feedback uh, from our customers. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate your feedback and also adding a lot of compliance data. So making the whole uh, experience very smooth. And then the documentation, when we launch it, will provide a clear details about what's coming in each of the launches. So we'll have way more details on what's in, coming in each of the stuff there. As far as configuration management, we launched the beta uh, in the first half of it. And that's API only as I talked earlier. Now we'll be building UI on top of it, the user experience and a lot more other capabilities, which we are targeting a configuration management preview by close to the end of the year. Okay, that brings to another important topic, pricing. This has been one of the topmost concerns, uh, questions I have been asked from my customers there. So let me reiterate a few key things here. This pricing, what we're talking about is for both patch and configuration management, so both the services. There's no cost from now until end of the year. So you don't need to pay there 
anything until end of the year starting jan 2021 will be charging per node which is like per vm per month of course prorated and hourly rate key thing is there's no cost for the first 100 vms after the additional one say 101 vm if the os config agent is running and continuously sending the data and doing something that's where you will be charged we will charge the rate of three cents per hour so if you keep this just for math if you keep this running os agent continuously 24 by 7 30 days you pay two dollars per node per month for both config and em uh, if you, i put a link here that gives you complete details in our documentation about uh, what does os config agent running mean what sort of things i can do i cannot do how i get a charge so a lot more details on that okay moving on so in this slide, I've included a lot of resources. So if you're getting started with how to do patch management, what's our architecture, how does this thing works? And I put a link for detail, how to create a patch job, how do you manage a patch job? Along the same thing with configuration management policies, how do you manage these policies there? Along with SDK links, API links, it's the same thing what I showed you earlier, just that we have a full link to the full page where you can see all the details about the supported operating systems, how to get started and everything, including some of our blog links. I would like to make one announcement. You must have already heard about Active Assist, which is a new uh, solution to reduce the cloud complexity by providing some proactive and intelligent features. Uh, and it doesn't matter what you're running, compute, storage, security, billing, cost. So there are features in every area which helps you with some reducing, how to reduce the cloud complexities. In the below links, uh, you'll have a lot more details than this. And I'm happy to say uh, patch and configuration management are also part of Active Assist. Okay, moving on. Key takeaway. So I know I've covered a lot of content with like demos and everything and hard to remember everything. Uh, but if there is one thing, the key takeaway which you take out of this session, this is this. Uh, GCP now provides an automated patch and configuration management tools across your fleet across your Windows and Linux, across your Linux distros. With that, we'll wrap up. Thank you so much for everyone for your time today and going through the session. And especially thanks to all the customers who have given a lot of product feedback and make us help better, better the product the way it is right now. I continue to request that. Please go play with the product. Give us more and more feedback to make it better. Thank you.